Hey, I need to check the level of the snare. Yep, just setting up this last mic. Okay, let me know. Oh, this isn't rocket surgery for crying out loud. What the hell is taking so long? What are you guys doing? Sorry, the cord was all tangled. It's ju just about done. Okay, just get it done. I saw that. All right, out, out. You're both fired. Get out. Whatever. That dude needs to switch to decaf. Man, good help is so hard to find nowadays. How's it going? This is Jason. Welcome back to the channel. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you don't like people asking that at the beginning of their videos, do it anyway, because it'll make you feel really good inside, especially during this difficult holiday season for everybody. So what I'm going to get into is two ways of using remote recording tools in the description. I'm going to leave a link to a blog post that has a whole pile of links and information, depending on the DAW that you're using and a bunch of other applications ranging from free to up to 10 bucks to be able to do this. So really what I needed for my purposes is I'm just recording in my basement. So I've got an old bedroom I converted to a studio control room basically. And then the main area in my basement, obviously the whole family shares that. I've got my drums out there as well, but I didn't want to drill holes in the walls. I didn't want to buy a patch bay or buy any extra gear so I wouldn't have to do what I used to do, which was basically disconnect everything from my studio here and bring it out into the main room so I could record my drums. So I'm gonna show you the Logic Pro remote app and it's free on the App Store and it has some basic features and some features that are a little more complicated that I don't actually use. And I'll show you the Reaper web interface setup as well, which is actually much better than the Logic remote control app but I'm not going to get into really complicated things like what if you have five people that you're recording at different, you know, different spots in your home studio and each of them need a different headphone mix and how do you stream the audio from your DAW through RDP or through OBS or any other kind of broadcasting software to hear the audio. Really what I needed was to be able to be back there in the vocal booth recording multiple vocal takes or creating different harmony parts to experiment with and not have to run back and forth to my computer setup, which is about 10, 12 feet away or so. And basically all of my drums are out there in the main room. So you can see my Strike Pro there. And I literally just run the cables from the Strike Pro to my Scarlett Focusrite interface and then just run a headphone jack across the floor. So with my acoustic drums, I actually needed to pick up a couple of these. So headphone extender jacks so I can reach the headphone output all the way to where my drums are. And then the other thing is grabbing one of these little gooseneck thingies that I can mount either onto the ceiling there in the vocal booth so I can just attach it to that old closet rail that's up at the top. And then I have the ability to control basic functions in my DAW there. And then I can hook this up to the shelf that is out beside my drum kit. So like I said, once I, what I used to do was I would just disconnect my focus right here and I would bring it out into the main room here and then just set up another table so I could record my acoustic drums out here. So I'd set up the focus right on that shelf and then set up just a little table where I could actually do the recording which was a pain. So I do have all of my drums set up here pretty much permanently, but I do take the microphones and stuff down every once in a while because it's a shared basement. I mean, the whole family uses this basement, so I try to keep it as clean as possible. So when I am recording, I will just run the cables straight into the room, into the back of the focus right. I'll use that gooseneck connector and just attach it to the cabinet here, and then I'm able to do the basic remote recording. So all I needed to do with this was add tracks, switch between tracks, start, stop, move between sections of the song just to keep it pretty simple instead of having to run back and forth, etc. I also have a volume adjust on my actual headphones 
So usually on my Scarlet Focusrite, I'll have the volume fairly cranked up and then I can just use the little slider on my uh, studio headphones to be able to control that. So now I'm gonna get into just showing you a basic overview of the Logic Remote app and then how to set up your Mac. Same thing would basically apply to a PC to be able to use the Reaper web interface. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the Logic Remote app first. The screen recorder has been a little bit flaky, so I've done a couple of takes of this and it keeps stopping, so I'm gonna try and go through this pretty quickly. Basically, there's some basic features that uh, work best for me, the Logic Remote app. Actually, there's a ton of stuff you can do in here. Um, it's quite programmable as well, but it's very simple and very easy to use. The setup is instant, so you go into your settings, basically, and into setup, and you can see that I've got my mobile device connected here. If I delete it, now it's gonna disconnect me from the app. I click on my Mac, connect it, and boom, it's set up instantly. There's nothing that you have to set up or configure at all, it just works. So basically the main screen is where I will do everything from, and you can cycle between all of the tracks by just moving the arrow keys up and down, and then you get your basic transport control functions. You can rewind to the beginning, hit play, you've got record, cycle mode on or off, click on or off, and then your settings, which will allow you to add new tracks and duplicate tracks and change the velocity and time signatures and stuff like that. Basically, all, I, all I'll use it for is to be able to move between markers. So you do need to have your markers set up and it will flip back between those so you can punch in wherever you want. And then your controls at the bottom, start, play, sorry, stop, play, record. Another repeat option for cycle mode and pretty simple and easy. You can also click in the middle of the display and then you can, uh, you can actually just scroll through the uh, timeline basically and start recording wherever you want to start recording from, which is pretty cool. So let's see if the screen recorder craps out while I switch to portrait view. Nope, it's actually still recording, awesome. So portrait view just gives you one fader view. On the iPad version, you actually see a whole bank of faders. I think you see up to eight, and then you can swipe between fader banks. And you do get some options. Obviously, you can control the volume. You can see it changing on the screen there. You can change your inputs and outputs and your gain, and also, mute tracks, solo tracks, or arm them for recording, which is good. You can also set your automation mode, which I would never use that on this because I really just use it for recording when I can't be near my computer if I'm out there doing drums, but you do have that option as well. You get the same transport controls at the bottom and that's about it that I use it for. Now you can go into settings and you can turn on or off the allow your phone to sleep. So you can leave it on permanently and it won't shut off, which if it does, sometimes it will actually disconnect and then you'll just have to reconnect your phone again. But other than that, it's a very simple app and I'll often actually use this transport control to uh, control the DAW when I'm actually sitting here working. So I'll use this little, um, what the hell is this? There's these little stick figures that you can make movies of and it came with a little phone holder. So I'll set that up, I'll just sit it beside here and then now I've got a simple transport control that I can use, especially if I'm using the console one, it's a lot easier to just have this transport control either right hand or left hand and then I can mess around with the console one and I never have to use the keyboard or the mouse which is actually pretty cool. So the last thing that I'll show is just with the markers. So if you don't have any markers set up, obviously you won't be able to toggle back and forth. So you get that little error message, command is not available because there is no marker. And in Logic, I use arrangement tracks quite often to do songwriting and construction and stuff like that. And there is an option here under markers, create from arrangement markers, and it will duplicate it. So if you do use that feature, you don't have to add those individual markers. And then now I can move between and start recording wherever I want. So it's a huge time saver for me, especially if I'm back there just doing vocals. If I'm working on you know a bunch of harmonies and I wanna try a bunch of stuff out, I might end up with you know 20 or 30 different tracks and combinations of things. So what I used to do is I would arm the track for recording, hit record, run back there, do the vocal, 
run back, hit stop, press command D to duplicate the track, hit record, run back there again, and keep repeating that process over and over again, which um, trying to get the least amount of exercise as humanly possible. So this saves me from actually having to walk that 10 feet back and forth, which is great. So I can maintain this unhealthy lifestyle. So huge time saver, free on the app store, works great on the iPad, works great on the iPhone. Now I'm gonna show you how the web interface works in Reaper. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to set up the web interface in Reaper. I'll leave a link in the description that will point you to how to set up your Mac or PC as a web server. The one I'm gonna show you is based on Mac OS Catalina, so I haven't upgraded to Big Sur yet because everything will basically break with all of my plugins because none of them are actually ready to support that yet. So on a Mac, you would open up your terminal editor and type in this command. And basically what I'm doing is I am telling my local web server to load the files from the Reaper uh, web interface app instead of the default folder that is set up when uh, you set up your web server on your Mac in the first place. So I'm gonna open up that configuration file expand this and there's really only one thing to change and it's right here to add this line so that's the folder path where uh, the Reaper web application is stored so by default it sets up your user folder as uh, your uh, where your web files will be stored so repoint your server root to that folder and then fire up a web browser and you'll be able to access that web interface right away. So what I'm going to do now is show you once you have that set up and your web server is running, now inside Reaper you're going to have to enable that web application interface. So in your preferences, again hit command comma. Second last from the bottom is where your control surfaces are. So simply click on add and then go to web browser interface and that will bring up this window here that uh, is pretty simple. Run the web server on this port. You can have a username and password if you want. And then Reaper has a bunch of default interfaces that you can use. I'm gonna use the fancier one, but I'll just quickly show you some of the other ones as well. So when you open it on your mobile device, it's gonna open up that fancy UI. So if I switch over to a web browser and I go to my web interface, at jl.local, so this is what I have set up as my actual host name. So on a Mac, the way that you find your host name is you go into your sharing options and it's gonna say computers on your local network can access your computer at jl.local and you can edit that and use whatever host name you want basically. So that's what you will type into your browser uh, you could also just simply type in your IP address, and I know mine off by heart, so I could type that in. And now, because I did set up a username and password, it's going to ask me to log in. Uh, I type that in, and I don't want to save that. So here is the fancy version of the UI that I've chosen to use. If I go back to the non-fancy version, so now I just get basic transport controls, stop, start, play, pause, cycle, and then I get a list of all my tracks down here at the bottom. So what else is there in here? There is basic, index, fancy. So if I switch this to basic, so now just basically no graphics. So play, record, stop, but you don't get any navigation controls with that. The other view that they have is, I haven't set this up, but lyrics, if you actually add MIDI tracks and add um, uh, text commands on your MIDI tracks, it will actually show the lyrics. You could actually type that in and use it as a prompt for your singer, even though printing out a piece of paper is about a bazillion times easier than adding a MIDI track and adding a bunch of commands and adding the text and synchronizing it to the timeline, etc. So I don't bother to do that. And the last one that they have is more underscore me.html. 
So now, select your monitor track. So this is where I said it can get complicated very quickly if you're doing this with multiple performers and you've set up your routing in Reaper to have, say, four or five, six different headphone mixes. You can actually uh, change that so you can route the proper audio to each person. I'm not gonna bother with that because it's just me here and all I really need to do is move between sections of a song, start, stop, add tracks, and that's about it. But you do have the capability to get pretty sophisticated with this if you really need to. So I'm gonna go back to my default. I'm gonna go back into Reaper here. And then now, if I hit play, there you can see the playhead is moving. I can arm the tracks. So if I wanted to record, you know, if I was doing this with my drums and I had all my microphones set up, I would arm all of those for recording and then those are all set to be recorded with. So the fancier one is the one that actually gives you more details in your transport control. So if you want to flip between different sections of the song, it works the same way as it does in the Logic one I showed you. You would just have to set up your markers, basically. So I have two markers that are set up here. I've got verse one and verse two uh, already set up. If I wanted to add another one here, I could insert marker and just call this verse three or chorus. And then now in my web interface, I can switch between all of these very quickly just by using these controls. So you can see that in the Reaper interface, I'm on verse one right here. Now verse two and verse three. So it's really easy to navigate back and forth. And it's a pretty simple thing, but it's pretty easy to do. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. This could get long and complicated very quickly, but if you're in a situation kind of similar to me where it's maybe you're recording by yourself or maybe you're with one other person, but mostly by yourself and it's not convenient to be near your computer or you don't have a mobile setup or you know, like I mentioned in the opening, what I used to do is disconnect my interface and bring it out into the drum room, bring my laptop out there. Um, it was just a pain to kind of move back and forth. And again, I didn't want to drill any holes in the walls. I didn't want to run cables anywhere. I didn't want to do any of that kind of stuff. I just wanted the ability to quickly be able to start, stop, and basically move between parts of the song to make it a little bit easier. So again, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.